No. Um, you can't otherwise. No, it's, a, cho it's yeah. a choice thing, isn't it? It's a choice thing. You can you can use something like sending, but he otherwise he would otherwise be using Dream to contact you to give you this uh, information. Yeah. So it would just be a matter of he'd need to give it to the person casting the seeming spell. Your child will be. Yes. Um, the music has stopped. But... We we are technically begun, but keep planning. I've got some typing to do. Cool. Okay. Um. So so that's the plan. We need to. Okay. So for for at least to make sure we get done this session is. Oh, I need that blue quartz. I, I I know it's a bit like it's just for me, but I need it. No, um, any power is is needed. Exactly. Um, okay, and so we co and we contact the plague lord through sending. Yep. And we've got black hole we need to go to. Tell him where would it, we because it's would black hole have blue quartz in? You don't know. We don't know, but we know Oregon does. You know well, that Oregon then... has it. Its situation is that it has a jeweler's shop, so selling crystals and gems of that variety would be something it could do. Blackhold cool. has varieties of gems, given the nature of where it is in the mountains, but yeah. the nature of it having specifically blue quartz might be a bit more finite. Okay. So actually, I, I... that's actually a good thought. Because Malcolm did go to the gem shop. Would he have remembered seeing any blue quartz? Oh, wait, no, he did see blue quartz. In where? Uh, the gem shop. Because it was one of the gems that were offered in the uh, trying to get the different colored gems and stuff, but I went with a different one. Yeah. In, 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 if you mean in Oregon, then yeah, but the nature of yeah. what you're after was a large yeah. chunk of it, so getting a smaller large. chunks of it would be easier than getting one large one, and they only had one large one of blue quartz in, in step, because you decided you were going to go for sapphire for later on. Yeah. Would, would it be possible to get them to what, to ask them to like break it down to be smaller? Yeah, that's something you can ask. You could just get Sasha to smash it with a hammer. Keep in mind, yeah. if it has to be a specific shape, then that's going to be a little okay. bit more required work-wise. To, but... to make clear, I do have dual proficiency with jeweler's tools. I wouldn't smash it with a hammer. Uh, well, you would. Be... a really small hammer. <laughs> Sasha, smash! I would smash. shape it. <laughs> no, admittedly, no, no, potentially, with a teeny tiny hammer. Because cause have, have you seen, like, People breaking down diamonds, like looking, look at using like a like a spyglass to look and see where the fault lines in it are. Then really tiny hammer with really tiny chisel, lightest tap ever, and it just falls apart. I haven't. Anyway, hello oh, and welcome great. to Crabby D and D. I am here with my players: Suds, hello, Harlan, Uwu, Sam, <laughs> Uwu, Simon, Uwu. Jamie. Oh, woo. And Infernal. Oh, woo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all of them. You know you know all of them now. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, my thanks for Crabby D&D. &D. Uh, usual announcements. Thank you to um, Zenosa for all the artwork. You can see all the wonderful tiles over here and these particular ones that I may be using in the coming sessions. We'll have to see. Um, so, yes, all of these were... Made by Zenosa, you can go and check uh, check that out. There is a link believe, below the stream. If you're watching this later on YouTube, I would ask you the question why, but head of the stream, there's a link there. There'll also be a link in the description below. Uh, all of the music comes from Tabletop Audio, so go and check that out. Free site. You can go and do whatever. And all of the maps are made on Incarnate.com, so you can go and check that out as well. I do take commissions for if you want to. I do have a work backlog, though, so I will be busy for the next few Thursdays. All right. Mm. With that being said, I think we should just get straight into this. There's nothing else we really oh, need to do. Oh no. Yeah, it'll be fine. Run! Yeah, it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Alright, so. Last session. Our party of adventurers. Elzion, Queglod, Sasha, Malcolm, Burn, and Rook. After heading into Webfile's lair, loosing it for all it's worth, taking some friends back and otherwise doing the best they can to protect themselves against Elzion's rather possessive mother, the party decided they were going to, well, see what they could do. They finished off some, some final things, 
and went for a rest in Elzion's tower. Arriving into the large, kind of parliamentary style building, made with a large open courtyard, swimming pool, and beautiful interior, specifically designed for each individual who would rest there, the party went about their long rest, with Malcolm remaining in the tavern overnight. While this took place, and the party slept, each individually enjoying a good night's rest and any points of exhaustion or things that you need to recover from a long rest, you may go ahead and do so. Rook lay there in bed with a strange sensation as he tried to fall asleep. The sounds and feelings of something crawling in the back of his head as he began to experience a dream. In this dream, he stood on the top of this large stone structure, looking out across the city, and as he looked up, he saw the skin scrub next to him and a rift tear open with a king of blood, newly decorated in gold and black armor, otherwise other, further decorated with ivory and bone, with a crown atop his head, studded with various gems and weaved together with these thick pieces of obsidian and bone. He wandered through with a new look about him, a look of renewal and strength. Beside him, and walking through equally, was a far more dangerous and imposing blind butcher. Covered in these red marks, seemingly refound his old strength, he wandered through beside him, and looked around, strangely curious about the area he had now been brought into but still as dangerous as they once remembered. And a third addition to this party. A massive, an otherwise gargantuan pit feet, decorated with these black adamantine chain armor that wraps over his form, the large flail to his side, flaming and burning as he wanders through. A glare and dangerousness about him as he stares about the area with eyes piercing everything. The skin scribe says his hellos, as the information is given that the king of blood, as he now stands, wishes to rush the proceedings, wishes to recall his brother back to this location, and otherwise begin the process of his marriage to the empress. With this information being given to the party by the skin scribe, it seemed, from the dream, Rook awoke a cold sweat. In this sense of panic, he got out of bed and felt the need to relieve himself. In the pit! <laughs> In Sorry. the pit. With this, we kick off there. In the middle of a room, otherwise wooden slats, except for the hole in the corner of the room. The bed, otherwise sticking with the cold sweat that you were once in. The, your heavy armor laying to one side, your fur drenched, as you feel cold yet warm. You feel uncomfortable in this air as you look around. It is dark. The nighttime ambience of crickets and fireflies and the outside windows decorates the landscape. It's calming yet unnerving. What do you do, Rook? Oh. <laughs> Okay, I am. Um, I'm in my room, right? Mm hmm. Chilling. Was there on sweets? There was, yes. Yours was just hidden behind a wall. I am gonna go and desperately look for somewhere I can go and have a bath. Okay. Try and contemplate what is life. Okay. You otherwise leave the area no, you're Bob. in, kind of looking over you pat against the wall and you eventually find the handle and push through into a otherwise beautiful porcelain bath and shower preparation toilet and sink okay i'm gonna run a bath and have a soak i mean let's be honest chances of me actually getting a full night's sleep tonight is going to be quite small i'm shattered and i'm scared so bath it is and then food and then I wait for people to appear. Okay. Some bloodshot eyes. <laughs> Rook on the edge. You. Otherwise, as you go to run a bath, you see a Farnsworth there, otherwise pouring the hot water in, um, adding 
a few bits of basic salts to it as he otherwise looks up gives a nod and disappears in that instant as the warm bath is run for you you climb in otherwise attempting to relax kind of sliding down into the bathtub as you begin to wash yourself off you finish your bath relaxing as best you can as you get up and out you towel yourself up heading back out into the corridor to the main hall where a few candles have been lit and placed on the surface of the uh, beautiful carved table the strangeness of this place at night time is eerily dangerous the moonlight kind of peers in no lights are otherwise lit except for the candles on the table and you can see the tapestries and the statues that line the walls of this interior are strangely ominous at night time as you wander through, you see the staircase to your right that leads up to Elzion and Sasha's room. You hear no snoring, no sound. It is quiet, as a plate of sandwiches is brought to you, with a small and otherwise freshly brewed kettle of tea is placed on the table on a small uh, coaster, tea cosy placed atop it. Farnsworth nods and disapparates in that instant. Thank you. Right, time to eat, have a drink. Um, do I have a rough idea of the time? Uh, make me a survival check with disadvantage. Just because the nature of this area oh, yeah. is potential artificial nighttime. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to tell whether it's mimicking. I was decided it's nighttime, oh, so it's, it's nighttime. Eight. eight. You otherwise peer out the window. You look up, you see the kind of the two large moons mimicking the sky, but their orientation is off compared to what you know. It's these would be the moons in summertime, but you know that it's early spring, so you suspect it's mimicked in some regard. Okay, um, I'm gonna call for Els. Uh, Els in no, I'm not calling for Els in time. I'm gonna call for Farnsworth. Um, uh, Farnsworth. Yes, sir. What's the time? I believe outside of here it is currently 1 a.m. You still have several more um, hours before the sun rises. Okay. I'm going to eat my stuff, eat my food, drink my drink, and I'm going to head back to my room. But my room in the tavern. Okay. And try and have some sleep. You otherwise exit via the door, entering into your tavern once again. You see the moonlight otherwise dripping through the windows and otherwise casting itself across the wooden slats of your tavern you look around you can hear the kind of the light breathing of the otherwise baby crystalline dragon in malcolm's room not far from yours you wander over to your room and you kind of take the door handle and push it open you feel exhausted as you otherwise look in seeing the empty room it's Strangely unnerving thinking about what you've just experienced. A want to tell your party, but you know they need the rest. Mm. Uh, well, I'm going to try and go back to sleep. Go over to your bed. You lie down. Make me a... I believe it's a wisdom saving throw as part of dream. Quite a lot. Is it, uh, is it wisdom or is it charisma? I always forget. Uh, say wisdom. Most likely wisdom. Yeah. No, 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 no. Chris is going to quickly double check, but I believe it is wisdom. Dream so is what, sixth level. I think we should go with wisdom. Seventh I like level. wisdom. I forget. What level is dream? Yeah, dream's uh, fifth I level. Warlocks can cast it multiple times. Uh, uh, you can roll, and I'll hmm. tell you which kind of save it is. Uh, wisdom saving throw. No. Yes. Oh. Wisdom. Okay. Wisdom. Plus two. Plus two? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. You get a feeling as you otherwise just sit there. The image was very forthcoming. A very powerful image. It shakes you to your core to think about it as you struggle to rest properly. <laughs> Any hit points that you lost the previous day, you do not regain, but all other things you would regain from a long rest, you regain. 
Okay, I didn't lose any hit points though. Okay. Excellent. Wonderful. You otherwise do your best, kind of resting carefully as you lie there in bed, kind of just tossing and turning, waking up at various other portions throughout the night in not a similar cold sweat, but an uncomfortableness. I managed to sleep then. Just. You managed to sleep just. Whether that's okay. meeting the DC or what, you don't know. No, fair. Fair. Okay. Right. So, I guess I'll sleep until I wake up or morning. Okay. You awake. You find yourself. Each of you slowly but surely waking up, Rook being the first, or Rook and Burn being the first two to rise, strangely enough, where Elsie and you find meditation has come to you, you remain in your room for the sake of the other members. As Burn, you wander out into the hallway, it is a bright and otherwise warm morning, Farnsworth has begun to prepare breakfast, placing it on the table um, in the mansion, while Rook, you wake up in the tavern at this point. <laughs> I'm going to do my routine. I'm going down for more food. Okay. In the morning. I'm not even bothering with my armor first thing. <laughs> Screw my armor. It's... In fact, I think it's priced in Elzian's place. So, <laughs> I am just... Okay. I want food. You head downstairs, go in to get food. Angus is otherwise prepared. The usual breakfast for you, all of you. As uh, Burn, you otherwise arrive to a well-cooked and otherwise very open breakfast at the table. No one else is there yet. So just me and Burn. Burn's inside the mansion still. All oh, right. Fair. Mm. Okay. I'll be stuffing my face and waiting for them to appear. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to do in the morning, Burn, before anything begins? Um, we have no idea what just happened, right? No, you have no idea, not yet. Um. Other than change the spells I have prepared, not much. Okay. Slowly but surely. Yeah. Yeah. Slowly but surely, each of you begin to come to consciousness. Elzin and Sasha, you both have a good night's rest. You both had a good night's rest. You um, wake up in your otherwise decorated room, heading down towards the table. Um, you see Quaglot otherwise joining you. Mm -hmm. um, but you do not see Malcolm or Rook anywhere. Mm -hmm. As Malcolm, you awake, you see Rook downstairs, otherwise beginning to eat breakfast, as you are awoken by the same smells of cooked egg and bacon. Hmm. Now, I'm right in assuming that Rook looks like shit, right? <laughs> yes, you look at Rook, He's he looks like he's washed during the, like, washed early, so where people would usually have either a shower before bed or in the morning, Rook looks like he otherwise cleaned himself part way through, yet he still looks a bit off. It, he doesn't look awake and right. Malcolm just walks up to the table. Damn, Rook, you look like shit. Everything alright? <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, I don't so know how to respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, well-known traditional barren land uh, greetings. Um, <laughs> Damn, you look like old as barren. Damn, you look like shit. <laughs> in, in the barren lands, you greet yourselves like dads do when they're in a pub. Like, oh, look look what the cat dragged in. <laughs> Just like, brother, you don't know half of it. Man, I had some guy messing with my shiz in the night. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a long night, Malcolm. Long night. Um, we've been summoned, uh, Prince King. Uh, don't say anymore. Yeah. He's Malcolm, here. Malcolm just grabs a couple sandwiches and grabs Rook. We're going in there. Uh, I'm gonna grab the rest of the sandwiches. Like, the plate. I'm taking the plate. Okay. You take the plate, Angus otherwise wanders in as he otherwise sees you grabbing the plate and kind of moves over and pours 
the bacon and egg butties for the rest of the party onto the onto the plate uh, as he otherwise looks over at you all um, sees you kind of heading upstairs and you watch as he otherwise stops writes something down and then turns it around do you want more food uh we should yeah, be yeah 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 i would right. if you could bag it for me i'd appreciate that Lots of food today, huh? he writes yeah. bag it question mark just, just wrap it up so i can take it if we have to go somewhere gives a thumbs up takes the chalkboard Thank back you. and otherwise heads back into the kitchen all right let's go in here i don't know where my armor is i mean oh my axe Oh, my sword. Where did you sleep? Oh, everywhere, Malcolm. Everywhere. I I went to bed. Oh, it would probably be in my bedroom in here. And then I had a bath. I can't imagine I took it in the bathroom with me. And then I come out here and then tried to sleep in my bed. And I had a rough night. And then woke up this morning and wanted food. So it could be anywhere. Honestly. I'll have to see if Elton can track this stuff down in his place. I mean, Farnsworth seems quite with it. That's because there are many Farnsworths. So many. So many. <laughs> On the game! Every single brick in this building is a Farnsworth. <laughs> fuck, I just lost the game. <sighs> I just lost the game. Oh, fuck. Sam, don't make me do psychic damage for that. <laughs> Sorry, but it's the but rules. you know the rules. <laughs> I know. Where? Wow. All right. <laughs> uh, sure. Wow. Does he not know of the game? Oh, um, apparently not. So you head back in. Otherwise, opening the door, you head into the interior. The early morning, um, the early morning sun, kind of cresting over the horizon of this, uh, of the magnificent mansion. You see the outside garden gardens otherwise being tended to by various Farnsworths in the early morning. Some dressed up in kind of green aprons and sun hats, um, doing trimming to the nearby uh, shrubbery and other uh, bushes. You see a large number of... Uh, a few of them are otherwise fishing leaves out of the um, swimming pool in the morning, and others are beginning to kind of set up the patio with tables and chairs. As you head up to the front door, the door is open to you as the bell rings the rest of you watch as uh rook and malcolm both head in carrying a massive plate of food and the rest of you have all all kind of look at the large carved table in front of you decorated with chickens other bits of meat salads and vegetables various insects on sticks all manner of bits and pieces why did you bring that in here we've got food <coughs> I am hungry. <laughs> Quite hungry, I'm a Elsian. Long, a long night. Oh, what's, way too long night. We need to what's, catch up. What's, yes. What you should explain? Yes, I'm gonna sit down. Oh, before I go anywhere though, Elsian. Yeah. I think I might have lost my armor somewhere in here. Okay, okay, that, that, that's, if it's in here, then, uh, Farnsworth, can you and your other Farnsworths please find, uh, Rook's armor and any other equipment he might have left around? Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, what should we do with the axe? Uh, ah, uh... where is the axe? It is in his room. We can bring it here through magical means. It will okay. just take up a large portion of our ability for a while. That's fine, uh, I can go and collect it. He can go collect it. Uh, it. The way to his room should be easy enough. We'll bring it all to his room. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and Rook, uh, just just to think, if you pull on the shovel in your room, it will reveal an actual bathroom. I just went charging through the wall. I found the wall. I found the bath. Don't panic. Uh... <sighs> Great, I also that, just... have used the pit. <laughs> that you... That was a joke! That was a joke! You were supposed to... Oh, no... I, I, well, you'll be free to use the pit after I've told you what's happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, so, about halfway through the night... I had this skin scribe staring at me. I woke up to him being there. Um, next thing I know is suddenly I'm in this... 
place that's got brazes and pillars everywhere. And then I look up, and the Prince of Blood, who I'm assuming is the King of Blood, because he's got this crazy crown now, and gold stuff all over him. I mean, he looks like a glammed up. I don't know anymore. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, he's there. Um, oh, uh, the Blind Butcher's also back, and he looks more terrifying than ever. Absolutely mm -hmm. covered in blood and all sorts. And he's got a massive... I'm assuming what must be the pit fiend. It's huge. And it's got adamantine armor. And he looks terrifying. Uh, yeah. Long story um, short. Well, the skin scribe has told us that he is home. And he is trying to rush the wedding forward. The, 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 the countdown has... This is the countdown, isn't it? I don't know where we stand, though. Because it was the skin scribe that summoned me. Yeah, that's different than what we were told. Oh. I don't know if we have more time or less time. <clears throat> oh boy. Okay. 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 We since we have literally no idea. We need, we need to get moving now. What do we need to do? Right. I need swishing my cloak to fill in the. Fill in the blue quartz and, and the lavish crescendo. Okay. I think Oregon would be the best place to go. Okay. What else? Anybody else? Uh, well, black hole, need... don't we? Okay, if we I've have had time for it. Yeah. Mm. I also need um... preparations made for me to be able to disguise. How? Because to... I can't. Yes, you want your big to them too small. Uh, yes. Uh, one of you will need to get in contact with with the plague lord again. Okay. He'll be able okay. to send. He'll be able to send Elzian information of what he can disguise me. In. Mm, cool. Cool. I can. I can send a message. I can send a sending about that. Mm, just send a sending then. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, sorry, I don't have the brain power to. Don't don't worry about it. Just send a message, just, mate. Just send the rough message. Yeah. Twenty five words is enough. Is enough space. Is enough to send a message and um, have uh, it uh, over. Chris, we got thought... word from the skin scribe that the countdown is starting. We need disguises. Um, Queglod small. Help. Uh, help. Okay. You Love the... Sasha. Kiss. Kiss. You send the message, you otherwise hear back. I have heard. I don't know when the countdown begins. This wasn't planned. But I'll send images to your companion Elzian regarding creatures. I'm being summoned in a couple days. Look to then. Couple days, okay. I relay this to everyone. Okay. Cool. Oh. I should expect something fun tonight then. I actually have to try and sleep. Fuck. Um. So, uh, I. Do... If we go to Oregon, do you think we could get um, a. We could call up one of the. Um... What do you call them? Uh, the council. Can we get the, the council? And it basically explain to them what the fuck's going on. Uh, I mean, so someone of power sh should know about what's happening, at least. Worst case scenario, if we die, someone needs to be aware of what's going on so they're not completely blindsided. Mm. Uh, if we yeah. get hold of Davini? Yeah, I'll someone, think Davini. Someone that's going to get... Look, even if it's Gavin at the gate and he'll send a message out. <laughs> I don't yeah. care. We need, to send a, we need to get someone who will be able to get a message to the top. To the Emperor, effectively. I... Or at least think... as close as possible. I feel like if I tried to do a sending to Davini, it would just bounce off. Of the... I mean, we need to go to Oregon anyway. Well, I'm sure yeah. that Blue Quartz, others can go talk to the... Um, yeah. To, uh, and, you know, to... maybe Davini can marry us. Maybe he can, and if he can, that'd be great. She, and if she... not, we... they don't care. They, whatever. We'll, 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 oh, fuck. Malcolm, did you have something to say? 
Uh, I was just gonna say I was planning to leave a message for Rahal when she got back as well. Okay. Fair. Um, right. Right. Uh, Chris, um, could I... This is gonna sound weird. Um, can I use my weird metal fence thingy on Forge Storm to try and work out if there's any way for me to help it evolve? Uh, you were given the guidance from... Um... You were given the uh, you were given the guidance from Trisha regarding on how to mm. upgrade it. Mm. Um, she mentioned needing some form of extensive use using a more powerful um, item cre created by Forge Storm. The nature of it, you don't quite know, but you know that it has to be relatively powerful. So whether mm. that be whether that be based on grade, whether that be based on metal, you aren't whether mm. that be based on the type of thing forged, you don't know. Just something made with blacksmithing of a good quality or high resource requirement. Sasha, if it makes you if it helps you at all, to upgrade the gauntlets was kind of a similar way and I had to work with Mithril. Right. I well, we've got a, I've got a bar of adamantine. Um, Make something. I think today, yeah. today is the only day we've got to do this. Tomorrow we need to be actually preparing. Okay, um, Chris. Mhm. Mm what would it would it be possible for me to coat my armor in adamantine? Um, is your armor enchanted? No. This will enchant it, and it won't be able to be enchanted further. As an application. Right. Just I mean, so you're aware. Armor, armor's good anyway. it, it will negate crits, and that is the thing, but because your armor is pre-made, coating it in adamantine isn't necessarily an issue. And it will take the full adamantine bar, mm. but the main thing is that the adamantine, um, that when you infuse the adamantine, you can't remove it off of it without destroying the armor completely. Yeah. So keep that, that is... in mind. If yeah, so like basically, the, the armor itself is not uh, unenchanted. Currently, it was going to be set up to have placed the gemstone on the, in the center in order to make it yes. uh, enchanted. But yeah. if I do this, that means I'm immune to crits. Yeah, but that then means you won't be able to then use that gem in the center because it won't sock it. Because you've already got an yeah. overlying enchantment on the armor. <clears throat> yeah. In other words, it won't be receptive. Uh, it sucks, but it is what it is. Um... Honestly, I'd rather be immune to to the the goddamn Prince of Blood's crits than, uh, you know, take phenomenal amounts of damage. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have time to make a proper thing. This is the best option I have right now. Um, if I need to, I can just kill another red dragon. We've we've established we're capable of that. I, I mean, I don't know if coating something would technically work but i mean nothing ventured nothing gained no that that is how adamantine works yeah. you can coat adamantine armor, armor adamantine. is made from coating your armor in adamantine because oh, i, I didn't like the forge storm thing oh I see what you mean. oh yeah weapon itself yeah <sighs> yeah maybe but it's it also is it is a tool for making things and adamantine armor is one of the higher level things i mean I could Either try way. and, like, coat it in adamantine, but I don't know if that would actually help at all. I mean, it's I, a I... In, in my opinion, even if this doesn't, like, upgrade Forge Storm, you're still immune to crits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's my thought, exactly. Um, then that's what I'm going to be doing for the next however long is necessary. If possible, I'd like to um, um, uh, marry Elzion, but... Uh, marry Elzion while forging. Yeah, honestly, um, it, it really sucks oh. that I can't, you know, preside over my own wedding and just be like, "Do you? Yes, I do. Yes, all right, we're married. Thanks, great." I had a better idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, it it would take a little bit longer, and it wasn't act didn't actually uh, <laughs> achieve what y'all wanted to do. But what if we interrupt the the king of bloods wedding and after we get done beating him and all that you guys just take over his wedding 
Oh, we just gra we just grab. You know what? I, I, there's a part of there's a part of Sam that's like I'm willing to drop the AC just for that. And I know, yeah. like thinking about this, one thing, thinking about okay, Axe game managers. Ooh, AC is a stupid way to go about it. Also, AC, which I need. My my thought process is more along the lines of, you know, getting married before you go off to war kind of thing. Mm. Like I, I, I I'm thinking too. we, we I'm <laughs> thinking we take we we get married beforehand and then we take over his wedding as our honeymoon slash reception. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I like it. I like it. But we still need to find a priest, and this isn't important right now, honey. Uh, right. Yes. I mean. Okay. The plague lord. Can the plague, plague lord marry us? Why he's gonna? He's marry a priest. The king. Yeah, oh, he's shit. gonna marry them. Shit, the plague lord would do it. That's why I was. That's why I came up with the idea. The can plague lord okay, marrying right. them. Here's a question: Can he do a remote wedding? So he's not <laughs> actually physically in the place. I believe no, the ceremony no. spell does specifically. It's two people you're touching. That. Yeah, two people you're touching. Yeah. I know. Not not very COVID safe. You also you say. also don't know where he is, so that also yeah does lead yeah. into a problem. I mean, if we don't know where he is, no. No, anyway. look. I'm. I'm just okay. Can the Church of Steel marry people? They don't have the Church of Steel is a religious organization without the necessary nature of clerics. You again, you'd need to give them warning so they could prepare the ceremony spell. So this would have been something you would have right. had to have warned them yesterday if you wanted it's, to happen it's, today. Yeah, it's just because what about the Church they of Light. Need to they were still set up and okay, they were okay, more right. churchy church. Right, this is true. Um, either, either way, people are going to need to be prepared for. Um, I think. Okay, no. What I need is uh, a cleric who has a spell slot. That is a, that is all we and need. And has the ceremony spell prepared, which means if and people aren't doing, spell, but... if they aren't doing what red weddings I... on the regular, they don't have it prepared. God damn it! Uh, fuck. Is there anyone who makes um, holy water on the regular? Not that you know of. No. God damn it! This unfortunately is stuff you haven't delved into before with the city, like who, yeah, who does holy we... water stuff. Because um, burn. I did Why talk to a while about uh, about formal... seeing if we could get a, a priest. Why not just have a big formal wedding as a celebration for killing the king of blood? The AC. What they're trying to get is that when two people, when wait, two wait, characters wait, do, get yeah. married, they both get a plus two to their AC. They do get plus oh, two. Awkward maxing your fuckers. Okay. <laughs> Fair. But fuck you for calling us out on it. <laughs> fuck oh, you. I'm, so it's oh, I'm sorry. You know, no, 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 infernal. Yeah, sure. Let's 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 just don't. go into this without right. uh, okay, all, all pre possible preparations. All right. Let's put this way. The necessary need for We're ceremony on a regular basis is either if somebody is spending a lot of time making holy water, which isn't a necessity in these parts, because the vam they don't have things like vampire problems or demonic problems to that extent. Mm. Um, the closest they have is Aurum's Anchor, and Aurum's Anchor has their own methods of dealing with fiends. Outside of that, the, f the vampire problem isn't really a thing, given the Sanguine Sun's in charge. So, there isn't well, an issue. Yeah. So there's I, no I, need I think for it. Yeah, just as a note, I mean, we, we can go to a like a church in any like town or city, as long as we give them notice. Yeah, as long as we give so them long notice. As, yeah, if if the concern is like, uh, like where we're gonna need to be able to do it, there is one other person who might be able to cast the spell, um? being a paladin. Mm. Uh, which is Chronicle Loy. <gasps> What are you? Maybe what are you... I don't know. How? The dude's dead and playing catch with behold. <laughs> no, I have his soul. It might work. You know what? You know, I the Raven Queen gives her blessing. Yeah, yeah. This genuinely is an option. This will work. Chris, will this work? It's only one way to find a out. A genuine question: Will it work? <laughs> <laughs> genuine question. You're welcome to test your assumptions. 
Oh, you sick son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> okay, will it cost you anything to bring Chronicle out? No, it's free. All it costs is a spell yeah. slot. Yeah. I'll, I'll speak All right. if he, if, if he Do it. thinks he's up to it. Okay. So you're going to send some time yeah. commuting to talk to Chronicle. Okay, so... <laughs> yeah. That's that's the first thing I will do. Ah, uh, my head hurts. Sorry. That's fine. Burn, do you need to let your I'm, organization I'm going to take my head for that for a bit. <laughs> the cults are in motion. I mean... Uh, I assume I need to teleport to the headquarters to get to where we need to be, right, Chris? Yeah. It depends on how you're entering. If you're trying to randomly teleport in there, then obviously you won't. If you're trying to go through the same entrance they use, they did tell you that it that it will take a day or so to get to said entrance. Um, there is also other ways of getting there, potentially finding your own pathway over land. So if you're trying to get there for the purpose of following the preset path they have, then by all means you can you need to teleport there and go there. But you'd have you'd get to the city within a day of getting there okay you know that all of so, the military is on standby around the city in various ways so on your mo on your drop of a pen the military actions can begin in almost immediately okay so so if like what so at we've got a couple of days is what we're we've got is that meaning just two days I've no idea if, like, if what the sending was true, so it aim for a couple of days. Is that aim for a couple of days for him to get okay. there, or is that uh, two days and then it's the three day wait? I don't know. You remember specific wording from the um, from the dream that you had that the when the prince of blood or when the king of blood asked the skin scribe the details on his brother. Uh, the skin scribe mentioned that his brother was on a venture trying to complete some previous objectives and that he will be available as soon as he can be and the print and the king of blood turned around and said i want him here in a couple of days and the skin scribe said of course okay so and then the plague lord said that and then the Plague Lord said that he will be summoned in a couple of days, whether that oh, be right. he is going to have to start making his way there, whether that means he has to use teleportation spells, whether he's going mm. to be pulled I mean, through with other magic, you don't know. I mean, a, cu a couple is annoying, it's just a, couple, a little bit vague. A couple is two days. A couple is typically two people, therefore. Yeah, yeah. Days. So we kind of want to be there really within that time span. We we want we, we want to okay so or not. yeah it's a case of we want to be there asap yeah um, so we've got today and then tomorrow we've got to be already moving our way to the um mm. to the city mm -hmm. um now are we are we going to black cold and try to work out do we take Nagrail with us or we're we going to come back for him. I don't know how they'd feel about taking someone like him in. I don't know logistics to Black Hold. Hmm. Same would go for Elgin. He wasn't there with you last time. Uh, question. Um, what time is it currently? Uh, it's early morning, so probably 7 o'clock in the morning. Right. Um, I'm going to eat and immediately go down to the forge to start adamantining the armor okay just to let you know we'll get to that in a moment I... yep. so that'll take me out for the majority of the day I reckon. That, so... that will that i believe work wise that will take 24 hours to work so you'll need to spend most of the day and the night figuring this out uh i'm just double checking how long it will take okay. otherwise carry on burn would you be able to teleport me to oregon so i can get this Blue quartz, because I've become obsessed with it. I have two teleports today, so I can teleport to Black Hole and to Oregon, and then I can teleportation circle us to the organization. Okay. Hmm. Oh, Sam, um, also remember to grab diamonds of varying sizes whilst you're. Yeah, um, I, I will be. At the jewels. While I'm at the jewels, I'll be grabbing what I can blue quartz focus, then diamonds, then. Fuck it. Give me some ruby. I'll, I'll, I'll throw rubies at them, see what happens. 
or sapphires or something. Okay. So yeah, uh, this will take so Pump if and you, nickel. for adamantining your um, armor will take the full twenty four hours. So you're going to need to spend the entire time working because making making full adamantine plate armor is fifty six hours, which is not what this is. So because you're just coating your already pre existing armor, it's just going to take a lot of time. Um, That's fine. Just so you understand, the DC is twenty five because you're working with adamantine. Yep, I understand that. Does that mean he's going to go into the fight with one point of exhaustion? Uh, that means that no. he will have one point of exhaustion, and then he will have, and then Sasha will then proceed to get a long rest upon arriving at the city. Oh, yeah. So if your sleep gets disturbed, Sasha will have two. Everybody else will have one in that situation. Mm. Unless I cast Greater Restoration on myself. Unless you cast Greater Restoration to remove it, yes. Because it can be used Which to remove why points we need of exhaustion. Diamonds and diamond dust. Yeah. Yes. It does get expensive though. Mm. It does. It's bloody expensive, but it's worth it for this particular situation, I think. Yeah. Mm. I mean, yeah. Right. So, just so. I'm... Oh god. I'm going to. I want to go to Argon. I... Burns wanted to teleport. Me? Or us? I think me, you, and Quake Lobs have to go together because mm. we can go to the three places. Yep. We can we can scatter once we're in Oregon, then meet back up again. Um, uh, we don't know where uh, Osborne is, correct? No, Osborne is currently no, off the Osborne's off the radar till the Bloom Festival, and that's in six days' time. Mm, mm. Yeah, as you look at the card, you see neither the uh, neither the Soothsayer or the or Osborne on the list. They are currently not working. So, N-A. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Yeah. Um, shall... Yeah, how are we going to do... Do you want me to go and collect Negril, or shall we go and... Oh, no, we're leaving tomorrow, aren't we? Because another hour's going to mine it. Shall I go and alert him anyway, so he's ready? For the morning. Don't know. <laughs> I mean, if you've got nothing else to do today, then sure. Yeah. Um, just because I'm really tired at the moment, refresh my memory. Who is Nagriel? The champion of the right. is still here. Yeah. For general parameters, he's a level 15 battle master. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just didn't recognize the name. Yeah. Mm. Well then, I will do that. Have fun with whatever it is you lot are all doing. Unless you need help with anything that I can help mm -hmm. you with instead. Do you need help with anything, you guys? I don't think I do. Okay. And everyone else is quiet. Okay. Okay, um, well, I'll leave you. To yeah, you're, pro you're probably most, most useful speaking to Nagriel then. Okay, so, I will uh, go speak to Negro and then I'll help Sasha if Sasha needs hand. Probably would appreciate it if anyone's free. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can shave a few hours off, which means that you'll both be able to go to bed. You'll have to make a con save each, but outside of that, there won't be any. Um, cool. yeah. Otherwise, it will just be a completion at that point. I'll I'll, I'll go and alert Negro, get him ready, and then I'll go and help Sasha. Okay. Get Malcolm. Sasha Thank you. Uh. I was going to um, drop off my letter with somebody I know can actually get to get it to uh, Raha. Okay. Who would you like try. to drop that off with? I am going to go to the surface and try to find one of the druids that work for the Phoenix. Okay. Uh, roll me a nature check, given you're trying to find rats in a... Rats in a city that aren't actual rats. Uh, I believe that's a twenty-eight. Uh, no, sorry, uh, close, but not twenty-eight. Twenty-seven. Uh, uh, twenty-six. Okay. 
wandering around town, kind of looking around through the streets. It's fairly early on in the morning, there aren't many people around. But as you are wandering around, you do see otherwise two rats just kind of sat there in a, a corridor, just patiently looking at one another, and as you kind of look over, they both look up at you. One kind of squints its eyes. I kind of like... I kind of like point to one of them, and I kind of do the like, come here thing, and walk to, into an alley. Okay. You wander into the alleyway, the two of them kind of scatter, and then momentarily one kind of wanders out. And you watch as it otherwise go, it kind of slowly approaches you. I, uh... I, I... say in... Druidic, the, as much as I can in Druidic. Okay. I need this message delivered to Rahal when she gets back. Okay. Druidic's more, I believe Druidic's more written than spoken. Oh, yeah, it's written, so I'll kind of, like, in the write mud. it. Yeah. yeah. Kind of crouching down, writing in the mud as you write this out, the rat kind of watches, looks up at you, kind of looks at your shoulder where the, um, where the orange scarf is. Otherwise nods, and you watch as it otherwise shifts out of this form, and you see, uh, kind of this bland looking human covered in mud with kind of this th kind of thick fur robe over his back as he always looks over at you kind of puts his hand out I give it to him takes the letter and you watch as he kind of shifts back into a rat becoming extremely small and then runs off with the other one alright and then I was going to try and see if I can go with them to to Oregon Oh, okay. So following the uh, the Quiglot Elzion and Burn Train. Yeah, I okay. don't really have anything else to do here, so I might as well go there and help if I can. Okay. So, with that being the case, Quiglot, you were communing to speak with Chronicle, correct? Uh, yes, I was going to ask him... Well, I'll, I'll, I'll ask him if he will be able to officiate the wedding. Uh, how long will it take to... Commute? Uh, it takes about 10 minutes just to kind yeah, of sit down and right. concentrate on the lantern. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise... yeah I, will, I will spend 10 minutes then. As you always sit down, kind of holding the lantern in front, staring into the darker abyss, you kind of feel your consciousness drawn ever so slightly as you kind of grab hold of the light blue threads of the soul of Chronicle Loy. As you otherwise kind of stare into it, you feel his presence before you. Ah, Chronicle. It's good to see you again. Yes, long time no see. Well, I mean, I've been a, I've been around, hanging out with Behold, you know how it is? Mm-hmm. What's up? Mm, we've had quite a few interesting visitors passing through the night, Metka. Hmm. They're not wrong there. Hmm. How much do you know about what's going on? I know the basic gist of it from when Elzion was disintegrated. Um, he set up shop here for a while. Mm -hmm. I uh, met the various fragments of what was inside of him and the weirdness of what he was going through. Um, they, he spoke of a killing a venacious horror, a large beholderish thingy that killed him. Um, outside of that... I've heard the basics of it, and that you're otherwise going after some creature that is Rook's quarry. Outside of that, not really much else. Hmm. Well, the final confrontation there is a few days from now. Planning We're to heading call. off for that. And in preparation for that, mm -hmm. Rook and Sasha are going to be getting married. We are. Rook and Sasha. Not Rook and Sasha. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Backstab, Delzian. All right, play the East Enders theme. Let <laughs> 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 me get there. Like Elton's first off is like, hey, King of Blood, I'm on your side now. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, uh, boy. I know you're all stupid, make intelligent saves. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, is what wow. you get, you dwarven <laughs> bastard! Uh, Alright, 
<laughs> Honestly, I thought you were going to go with Hussy. Um, no, no. But also, let's be real here. You wouldn't have a chance to get your revenge. Rook's wife would kill me. <laughs> and Rook. Rook. Rook's wife would kill me. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Okay, anyway. Anyway, uh, yes. Quick, quick had more than four hours sleep last night, so that didn't actually happen. Yes, that's fair. Elsie and, and Sasha are getting married in preparation. Ah. Oh. Wouldn't have thought the two of them would have got along, since they bickered a lot on our journey. Well, they were always spending a lot of time in each other's company, at least. Mm, I guess after, that's true. After your extended stay with Elzion, I guess they had a change of perspective. Hmm. I guess that's so something. Something changed within, mm. within their relationship. And that's why I was going to talk to you. They need somebody to officiate the ceremony. I can't do Would that. Would you be capable or willing? I can do that tomorrow. I'm sure that'll be fine. Hmm. You can I know that you can summon Sasha and Elzion both, both respect you greatly. Which is rare for Elzion, as, as you as you well know. <laughs> hmm. They'll need rings. That's one thing they'll need as um, part of all this. They'll need to otherwise pick up some rings for them to otherwise put on. Um, they'll also need to keep in mind that it'll be a Raven Queen emphasized wedding. So, keep in mind they probably need to wear black. I'm sure they'll be okay with that. And, uh, She's Kree approved clothing! <laughs> He's not working right now. Fuck! I'll no, find remember, something in Oregon. Clothes, Elsie, okay, Sa Sasha darling, I'll leave it be. I'll sort it in Oregon. Okay. But, yes, right. they'll need so something. Bang, bang. What was that? I can't hear you over the sound of the forging! Hold on, hold on. Bang, bang. bang. Simon, hold on. Sorry. Yeah, just to note that you you can renew your vows at a slightly less stressful time. If you want to do things in like a slightly different manner, when we have time to like get really fancy rings or whatever. Oh yeah. That's an out of character note. Yeah, we like yeah. I I have a full feeling that we are going to have a proper wedding later. Hmm. But if they're looking for just a basic some form of official official tying of the bond that's perfectly fine that's something i can take care of but when it comes to a much larger ceremony i can lead that as well of course if they're having guests that might be a bit more difficult to explain why you have a spirit leading the sun but fuck it at least the first time around i suspect that won't be a big matter hmm. it'll just be a small personal ceremony very well but yes, Plus summon me tomorrow and I'll have that prepared. Alright, we will do. Very well. good. Thank you for your help, my friend. Good to see you. Stay alive. You too. Uh, well, I'll give it a try. As you otherwise finish the communing, Malcolm returns. The party's ready to move out to Oregon. Sasha busy working in the forge, Rook is uh, informing various individuals and then preparing to help with the smithing, so... Burn, you are casting Teleport to go to Oregon, correct? Yep. Taking out your um, object of association, you kind of hold it in your hands as you kind of bring your hands out to everyone else. As everyone links hands, you concentrate on the spell, there's a moment of kind of weightlessness and poof. You all disappear in a flame of blue and gold as you feel yourselves thrust through the various planes and powers you feel your your feet land within the cobbled streets of oregon a large open expanse people very busy at this time as you land in the middle of oregon it's a miracle that none of you were clipped into some random passerby but as is the nature of the spell you arrive unharmed and you otherwise look around, you can see various guards are moving, you can see that it's a regular day in Oregon. None the wiser on the looming threat. Okay. What, is your, to... what is your first call for this? Uh, I'm gonna, we're going to scatter, aren't we, and try to do this as quickly as possible. Am I right? What's the full list that you need, Elsie? Okay, I need, I just need jewels, I, I need blue quartz, as many diamonds as I can get my hands on, and rings. Mm. Okay. 
So you'll be heading to the jewelers. I'll be heading to the jewelers. That's, um, that's my stuff. Does anybody um, know the direction to the jewelers or have its name to give him so that he can find it without needing to worry about a check? I'm not there. Is there I, a guard nearby? Name uh, I'll, I'll let the party see if they can go find anything in notes. If, if they can, then sure. Yeah. But if not, Ocean I, will be asking a guard. I don't think I have the. You weren't there, didn't you say, Rook? Yeah, I'm There's not there. Yeah. I don't know if you wanted to know. No, you. No, this would be too late now. We've done beforehand for that. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Um, can I make an intelligence check, please? Uh, go uh, ahead. Is it possible? Go ahead and make an intelligence check. Do you remember if you went there beforehand? I yeah. went there before. I that's oh, where yes, I got my you, gemstone. That's where you got your gemstone. Yeah. Not the best, but maybe you might give me some. Uh, it's a ten total. Oh wait, hold on. Sorry, nope, wrong one. Uh, eight total. Eight total. You can't remember its exact location. You know that you there are only two real areas that you went where most of the shops were, which was the main market district, you can't remember the name of it, and the otherwise the area where all the guilds are. You know that it's probably in one of those two, but that's the best you've got. I'm pretty sure the guilds one was the one where it was like that library, right? Just from memory? Uh, no, the library is a separate entity all, all by itself. Oh, okay. Uh, wherever... Malcolm just knows it was wherever that that chick that goes to the uh, uh, Astral Sea isn't. Wait, the one that goes to the Astral Sea isn't there, or it is there? It isn't where she is. Yeah. Because okay. I had to go somewhere else to find it. That's the best Malcolm can give. Okay. Does anybody else have any information on where it might be? If not, you may go ahead and ask a guard, Elgin. Okay. With the, the basic information I've got, and I've got like, ex go to a guard, like, excuse me, do you know where the uh, the jewelers is? Um. Or where does it, it be? If there's anywhere you're going to be looking for, head to the ivory windows, as the other way points off into. Uh, a western direction, or no, eastern direction, sorry. I will trust that this guard knows his way around this town, and go in that direction. Okay. Is anybody travelling with Elzion? There are four uh, of you, so decide how you want to split yourself up. I mean, I'm, I'm okay, fine with anyone. Need again, okay, so you're, going to, you're going to the jewellers. I'm blue going to the jewellers. Diamonds. And blue quartz and diamonds. Uh, sorted other gems, maybe. Sorted other gems, maybe, but that, that that's just a case of if there's something cool, but there's no we got no use for them okay. other than that. I believe we're, someone's going up to go and form the uh, the court, yeah. the council about what's happening. And I can't remember what else we're doing in Oregon. I believe those were the two main things you were looking for. The two main things. So, the so I'm fine with three things we need to buy and yeah. one errand to run. Between yeah. the four of them. I if, if, if someone else comes with me, just in case I need more money, I don't think I will, but just in case. So we can get this sorted, and I will pay you back. We, we have the money in the back of the tavern. Oh no, oh, I'll, I'll have go all the money them, on me. Sure. I'll go with them. No, I don't have all the money on me. Sure. Okay. Have... I will get started looking around for gems then. Uh... Uh, but I'm going to the jewelers for the gems. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you were going for the ring. Yeah, well, the, it's the jewelers. The jewelers well, will sell the ring, and it will sell some raw gems, but it won't sell a lot. This isn't a place where you will buy components for spells, like diamonds of that particular yeah, nature. Okay. You'll be able to buy small stud diamonds that will be there like a... 15 gold for... There was a spell whatever. component shop, didn't there? There was. There was a magic shop, which... <laughs> um, Malcolm rightly stated is in the Steam in Steamwaker's librarian, which is on the yeah. next to the keep. So that would probably I... be the best place to go to look for the diamond. Okay. But so blue court, you could probably how much blue quartz do you need? Oh I don't I can't remember, I don't have it written down. You need five pieces. Each one's worth fifty gold pieces, so two hundred and fifty gold. Uh, yeah. That is excluding 
need for cutting to a particular shape or yeah. tax charges if it's more expensive. Yeah, that honestly, that's fine. I can afford that. Get that in the jewelers. Yeah, that, that would be that what the jewelers, jewelers. before. Okay. That because I I want this to the clock to be a bit a bit stronger at least. I feel like I've been a bit slow on getting it sorted. But yeah. Anyway. To the jewelers. Okay. So you proceed to make your way off to the jewelers. Burn heading with you. Queglod and Malcolm. I'll go to the magic shop and get diamonds. Okay. Uh, and I guess I'm I will head to the jewelers. And where were you headed, Sabs? Uh, I guess I'll head to Davini. Okay, so we're going to go and try and speak with the council. Yes. Okay. So, we'll start with um, Elzion and, Bur and Burn. As the two of you otherwise head down the streets towards where you believe the ivory windows are, you pass through a series of beautiful kind of white archways, making your way into this almost large shopping area. You see that it's some form of trade district, the kind of ivory arches in place with windows of stained glass that otherwise uh, give off this beautiful light under this large canopy-like uh, roof that is in place around these central um, central stalls and, and other shops that line the outwards exterior. It's relatively busy at this time, uh, given it is a Sunday. It is a very busy day with everybody having days off. So, I would like the two of you, if you're providing assistance, to make investigation checks separately, please. Mm, mm, there will not be an advantage here, because in the instance you'll have to search separately for this sort of thing. Where's the tab with my character sheet up? Did I accidentally close it? That's the first lucky. Because unlike Jeremy, I close sheets. Should be 21. <laughs> but here I am with all of my sheets where I need them. Fuck you. Uh, that is a 26, Chris. 26, and burn? Uh, 21. Okay. It doesn't take the two of you long. As you're otherwise looking around, you see a large portion of the names of the uh, shops around here. You see um, Sevilla's Silks, the Tailors. You see the, the uh, Tailsmith's Tonics, the Alchemists in the area. Um, you see the Mosaic Vanity, the Jewelers. Nice and easy. As burn, you're kind of looking over the rest of the ones in the area. You see a carpenter's by the name of the Wild Woods Carpentry. Uh, you see... Oh, and the last one that you see that you remember very very vaguely was uh, Fen's Antiquarian. The uh, tinker or the uh, trinket shop, which you remember being these strange caged animals. And these kind of oh, animated yeah. trinkets. Yeah. <laughs> There it is, I guess. There it is, let's go. Yep. Heading inside to the otherwise beautiful shop front, you head into the Whitestone, uh, the Whitestone building. The, you can see that it's not too busy in here, but you see that there is a small queue in front of a uh, in front of a countertop. You see a otherwise young, younger female elf, otherwise busy serving these various individuals. Then you see a ha a other individual, uh, male elven one going around the kind of the glass cabinets you can see a few people kind of in couples beginning to look through various jewelry you get a sense that this is the main place to buy reading rings and given the occupancy in here it does look relatively busy mm, okay do you wish right. to join the queue or do you wish to explore looking for rings how long is the queue there's about three people in the queue uh Depending on how long each person gets served, you could be here from anywhere between three minutes, if it's a minute per, or three hours, if it's an hour per. Right. Um, how can we speed this up? Mental prison. <laughs> oh no! <my> God. <laughs> no, not mental prisoning anybody, okay? That is a hard no. Um... Illusory dragon. No, no, I've got an idea. Right. Oh, no. um, it's a dragon attack. Can I buy your finest blue quartz, please? <laughs> right, okay. Uh, how am I going? Because I, I want to get people out the way. Uh, Bribe them to give you their spot. <laughs> no. I'm thinking, of I'm thinking of a more magical method. 
I'm thinking of using Minor Illusion to create something that they really want to see and have to get closer to, so I then take their spot, they turn around, realise their spot's taken, get annoyed, but they have to sit behind because they'll cause a scene in a posh shop, and no one does that. They'll be trapped by social conventions. So, let's just hope they're British then. <laughs> yes! <laughs> let's hope they're British <laughs> and not American who will raise a fuss. They will straight up walk up and punch you in the face and get back in spot in line oh. where they yeah, were. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I want to see a commoner fight Elsian. Like, Elsian <laughs> could take a commoner. Even a posh one. Elsian could take a noble if he wants. <laughs> okay. Burn returns. <laughs> so, are you casting Minor Illusion too? I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast Minor Illusion and use um, uh, Illusory Reality to try and create like this really beautiful ring that I think the people in front of me would would like. Okay. Go ahead and roll me an intelligence check for the effect of the illusion. And I'm going to roll for the two people in queue because one's being served, so they're not going to... I'll say they'll roll mm. with advantage on this. Cool. Fair enough. Okay, so the per okay, so person should be... <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. That's oh, wow. funny. <laughs> For a, total, wow. for a total of 30. Okay. You, you, Sorry. you watch as the, you watch as the person who's currently being served kind of looks over at this kind of intricate thing, kind of seeing it appear, but then kind of goes back to talking with the clerk, who otherwise looks over, looks kind of conf confused at the new object that's appeared, and the two that are behind them in the queue kind of go over and go like, ooh, this looks interesting. Elsa takes a step forwards. You and Burn kind of cut into the queue standing there in kind of plain sight the illusion wears off after the couple of seconds and they otherwise kind of look and they're like where did it go and they kind of look up and look very confused looking around as they turn around and see that you have taken their spot hmm? i would like you and burn to both roll me deception checks please with advantage given the effectiveness of the spell Okay, oh god, both my dice are on 20s. Uh... <laughs> Don't worry, I'm up good. <laughs> oh boy. This yeah. ain't good, Chief. This ain't it. Mean, That's I'm an good, eight. I'm good. Don't worry. Okay. Elzian. I've got a smug ass grin on my face. And the total? <laughs> it's an eight. It's an eight. Okay. It... Okay, and burn? 29. 29. As Burn, you're kind of standing there stoic-faced, kind of just crossed arms, waiting in, in queue, being very casual about this. Elzion is laughing to himself, <laughs> just standing there sniggering, kind of keeping himself Try, to himself. To. The two individuals otherwise oh, look over at you. One of them kind of looks over and just goes back in the queue. And another one kind of steps behind, but you feel this pit. You feel this piercing glare and sense of judgment the entire time. Now, Elson just this makes him have to suppress his laugh even harder because it's a pathetic glare. He's felt proper glares <laughs> by his mother. This is nothing. Okay. Nothing. Okay. A short while after, the individual in front of you, about 10, 15 minutes later person in front of you who's otherwise busy kind of doing whatever has otherwise paid up and you see that they're otherwise leaving with a kind of a small selection of jewelry as you approach the female elf how can i help you today mm -hmm. yes i was wondering if you had a couple of things uh, i'm looking with my friend here for some wedding rings and she looks at I'm the two also... of you no ah. not, not like that this burn here is just a friend of mine my actual partner is currently working today ah. um and also uh do you have any blue quartz is this for the rings or is this separate uh elson sort of pulls his cloak the cloak out this is separate I s this cloak mm. needs its uh the blue quartz put in it in the appropriate places Gee. i am willing to pay for a rush job and a bit of a premium for it. She kind of stretches out her hand to kind of hold the edge of the cloak and just inspects like the each individual scales. Hmm. This is certainly something we can do. 
If you're looking for it to get made, it is a busy day today, but I'm... Mm -hmm. If my clerk uh, becomes free within the next 10 minutes, I can ask for this to be done. A rush order will double the price. Of um, course. Are you looking to repair the whole thing? Uh, just looking to replace what's been lost from it. Ah, it's, so... a, it, it, it's a magical item, and, it, and replacing the gems will empower it back up to what it should be. Very well. Um, she looks about it and like counts them. I believe it's five. She looks over them, and just kind of looks at you. How, given your rushing, and I can probably get this all done within the next hour if it's worked on. How mm. does seven hundred and fifty gold sound? That's more. That's fine. She nods. And with the Redding Wings, are you looking for the same sort of thing, or a different design? Hmm. I, uh, I'm looking for just something simple. I think, uh, my, my partner is a dwarf, and would like to get a ring that properly. In fact, that, of course, clearly, elf. So, she, something like that. Hmm. Something a bit elf and something a bit dwarven. Uh, Maybe mix the two, and we match. You look at her, and on the mention of dwarf, there's kind of this very underlying, like, oh no. What? Um, what? She is elf. What? And yeah, you get the general I see. sense that the she, racism. she doesn't like the idea. You know that Golodon oh, and oh, the people in the Empire God. generally don't get on with this. The North and the South are very different in their, their opinions. Mm. She has some form of underlying opinion about it. Whether this will have an effect on the cost, you don't know. I don't know. Oh, if, if they're going to be. If they're gonna be Elzion will pull a Sovek and put print flyers. He will. <laughs> he will do it. Like and let's face Grandfather and let's like face, grandson. <laughs> and let's face it. Elzion will. Oh my god. This it, place. It, it, what? It, 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 it's come full circle. It has what colours would you be looking for? Ah, I'm not sure uh El Elson stops himself before he's about to say, well, she worships Toran, so... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like, it's a case of... Mm, even Sam knows that's a bad idea. Um, I've got a lot of forging in her, so... Uh, reds, red, something red, something orangey, I guess. Some fine metal of some kind would be good. For mm. me, something simple. Uh... Looking, looking a bit uh, floral in its uh, design. Are we looking for when it comes to metal? Are you looking for silver, gold, platinum? Hmm. Hmm. Given the special occasion, I imagine gold or platinum. Gold or platinum? Yeah, that's that's let's go gold. Very well. And given the gemstone variety, I would recommend maybe a peridot for you, given the hmm? green colour. But if you're looking for something more blue, I would recommend an aquamarine. As for your compan companion, I <laughs> might recommend maybe some form of fiery garnet, maybe. Or something of a similar nature. If you're looking to go more expensive than that, then a, a star ruby, ruby by, or a ruby would mm. be certainly something we could do. And if you're looking for more expensive for yourself, a star sapphire could work. A blue uh, for think, yourself uh, and a red for her. I think for me, for me, I will stick with just the aquamarine, but uh, a, a star sapphire for for her. Star sapphire, star sapphire or star ruby. ruby? Yeah. Star Ruby. Okay. You, uh, okay. General estimation, she kind of says, for the two of them, given it's made of gold, given the construction, are you wanting this quickly as well? Uh, relatively quickly, yes. And by quickly okay. as in, can it be done as quickly as the cloak so I can pick them all up at the same time? Again, willing to pay for a rush job. I understand, I understand this may cause issues. Elgin is being polite to a, uh, a retail worker? Um, she because Sam can't be rude to them. She look she kind of looks at you and looks at the her clerk who otherwise kind of sees her gaze and otherwise comes over. And she kind of stops. 
we potentially have two rush orders, some bigger things. Some scales made of blue quartz in this kind mm -hmm. of shape and diameter. That is already discussed and confirmed, but two rings. Gold, one with aquamarine, and the other one with a star ruby. Do you feel that that could be done within the next two hours or so? As she otherwise looks at her clerk. If we... On my own, I could probably get the scales done within the hour. That wouldn't be too difficult, that's just gem cutting. Mm -hmm. The rings are a little bit more of a difficult cut. Um... If you're looking for something simple in design, so like a basic ring with just the studding, I can probably get that done within the hour for the two of them. If you're looking for a more intricate mm. design, then that will probably Actually, take um, several hours. This is a wedding ring, not an engagement ring, actually, so something very simple would actually probably be better. Without, without, without a gem in it. Or a simple band. Do you perhaps know simple. the width of your companion's fingers? For the nature of the ring size. Sam, don't. Um, Roll me an intelligence no, check. I, oh, God. <laughs> no, no, no. That was a terrible joke. That I, no, I should not. Okay. Uh, that is... If, if it's flat intelligence... Okay, flat can, this intelligence. Be a can this be a history check? This will Perhaps? Be a flat, this will be a flat intelligence because the DC will actually no. be lower. Because um, okay. obviously no proficiency can yeah, be added. 15. Okay. 15. You think about it you otherwise kind of think about it carefully and you suddenly have the realization you can use disguise self to make a physical illusion of you as sasha for perfect diameters of ring of ring finger mm -hmm. so if you wish you just, if you have disguise self prepared you can do that or a simple illusion spell can simply do it as well anything which probably wouldn't be minor illusion otherwise you might give away your game to the people behind you <laughs> um okay so is Elzion willing to spend a fifth level spell slot on seeming for this? Because <laughs> oh that's the lowest level one apart from minor illusion I have. Um, yes, Elzion is willing to spend seeming on this. Give me a second to see okay. sort of rolls his shoulders and prepare for a dwarf. <laughs> okay. Um, Crank. Okay. You appear in this um, visage. You otherwise proceed to have the measurements taken for the ring size, they take the measurements appropriately, you dispel the illusion, otherwise returning back to your normal form. And he takes the ring, uh, he takes the ring measurements and goes, given the nature of this, I can probably get this done within, if it's nice and simple, I can get this done within probably an hour and a half, seeing as it would be basic Excellent. basic studying and something Thank similar with the gems, given the rush order and nature of it. But mm -hmm. I'll, we're, we're, we're leave you, I'll leave you to Yen. I'll get started on this then. Okay. And she otherwise looks at you. So 750 for the blue quartz. For the clock. Given the nature of the rings and the rush order, I'd probably say 5,000 gold. 5,000 gold? We, we did say that he wasn't doing the gemstones anymore, remember? Yes, I Oh, were. you weren't doing the gemstones, sorry. No, we're not doing the gemstones anymore. Oh. We're like they were wedding rings, not engagement rings. Ah, so yes. it's just a simple iron... It's just a simple gold it, it, band, it's, 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 it's a simple band that's right. maybe got some vaguely nice design on it. My mistake. Not important. So cutting and heating and then reshaping to the correct sizes. Okay, in which mm -hmm. case that can still be done within the hour and a half. I thought it was going to include mm -hmm. some studying of the gems as well. No, no. In no which to. case, this will take... Okay, that takes the cost drastically down. Yay! So that we'll, we'll get fancy rings later. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Five hundred gold See, for the two rings. That's fine. So that's that's uh one thousand two hundred. One thousand two hundred and fifty. Yeah. Sorry, if you're including the yeah. gemstones with their combined cost plus the rush order, that does get very expensive. But yeah. So that is one thousand two hundred fifty. I had it all to them in platinum. Okay. They take they kind of take the platinum, seeing it kind of in this moment. They're used to this sort of thing, and they begin to kind of move it to one side. They take the 125 platinum after scaling up. Thank you very much. Please return in an hour and a half, and we'll have that delivery ready mm -hmm. for you. Thank you. You turn and leave, I assume? Yes, turn and leave. Okay. Two of you turn and leave, well, otherwise... That was, that was leaving the shop you will return in an hour and a half from now so if you have anything else you wish to do we'll get to that in a moment so quick lord heading up through the streets 
you head uh, with Malcolm for a while, and as you were otherwise walking up the large, the grand staircase through the centre of town towards the upper area, where you see that it is more of a relaxed time. You can see that there are a few park benches, people are relaxing, trees and greenery is beginning to step in as the bloom, as the people are preparing for the bloom festival, beginning to set up stands, bandanas, and uh, bunting. You see that um, uh, you see that a large portion of the uh, otherwise school, the academy that lies to your right as you otherwise go up the stairs, you see that it is otherwise open and a large portion of students are kind of going in and out. They seem to be having some form of fate or festival, kind of a nice early time before the holidays. As they're going about business, you can see that various students are dueling one another. You see the large library um, just to the left of that, and then the massive keep where the king otherwise resides. You look up, and the large shadow is forecast over you for the gif fortresses that otherwise fly in tandem over the top of the city. <clears throat> you travel okay. to your respective locations you heading to the librarian and malcolm heading towards the keep you travel inside and remembering as much you look to your right and you see the um uh, and you see the magical shop otherwise in place um known as the wizard's wards mm -hmm. you travel yep, towards it we're heading just but, just so i've got it right in my head um Resurrection and Greater Restoration are the main main intentions. For components for you. Mm. Uh, I I believe so. Sa Sasha, I what mean, do you need? Time more than Resurrection normally, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh... So if I get diamonds in multiples of a thousand GP and diamond dust in multiples of hundreds. Yeah. Why diamonds of a thousand GP? Isn't oh, it three hundred? Because that's for resurrection. Yeah. But I so guess we don't necessarily need that. I mean, okay, having at least one resurrection on hand, very fucking useful considering how likely we are to fucking die. But having some short scale stuff for revivifies is also very important. I believe a revivify is 300 GP. 300 per for revivify, 100 per for... The main things to note with uh, the difference between revivify and resurrection. Revivify is diamonds worth 300 GP. So they could all... You could have 30 10 GP diamonds. That would work fine. But resurrection requires a diamond worth 1,000 GP. So it has to specifically be one. Yeah, but if you have a thousand GP diamond, then you I can, can then use it. One. You can use it for the river five if you need. Yes. Yeah, but it will use it up, the entire thing. It will use the entire thing up. Correct. I assume we don't have a, or do we have a resurrection diamond? Uh, I let me check my notes. I don't think we do yet. I don't um, believe you do. I know you have a few diamonds for river five, and you have diamond dust. But I do a little bit of diamond yeah. dust, but I don't think you have a res resurrection diamond. Uh, I have one 500 GP diamond, and I have uh, honestly quite possibly no other diamonds. Uh, no, I've got uh, three uh, Revivify diamonds currently, and one 100 GP's worth of diamond dust. So, uh, so I've probably got enough Revivifies, like you say. So, so one it's the dust we need more. Yeah, the dust we need is the main, the main one for for. Uh, greater restoration if it's needed um and i will i will see if so fine. theoretically I diamond dust is diamonds so theoretically if i have 300 gps worth of diamond dust i could theoretically use it for a revivify in theory i i would say that the distinction between dust and full diamonds is probably due to the nature there would be like a cap mm. yeah fair because it's fair. like it's like saying that oh i have a bag of watsits but it's just powder and you say i have 10 <laughs> watsits worth like in here <laughs> depends, where, depends where you, can find it from. you would you would hoover that straight up but you wouldn't say i can consume this because it's 10 watsits okay. you don't okay. know that <laughs> it's a case of you look at it and just like 
Now these ain't Watsis anymore. This is <laughs> th th this is cheese powder at best, and I'm gonna <laughs> and I'm gonna hate myself after eating all this. I'm really glad I made that anagram. It works. Perfectly. That's a, <laughs> an analogy, not anagram. Analogy, but, sorry, uh, yes. Yes. Oh God, that 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 is a great analogy, and I will use it. <laughs> I will use. It. <laughs> when you get a bag of Watsits. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So yes, heading in, oh. you see behind the um behind the desk of the this particular place it's currently very quiet no one is in here and you currently see kind of leaning up against the desk kind of reading a book otherwise just slightly frozen almost in time reading through the book you see a yellowish skinned kind of dark blotches of brown and black uh, kind of covering her face slicked back white hair um as she otherwise looks uh, looks down at the set of spectacles before looking up ah new customer you looking for anything in particular? You seem fairly well equipped magically wise. Yes, we're looking for some supplies for a couple of specific spells. Uh, we? Do you stock diamonds here? We do, yes. They are watched over in accordance with Oregon's rules. Who's we? Uh, my companions and I. The dawn seekers ah i've heard of you i was informed as such what kind of things in particular diamonds wise i have a few not too many though they are still used by the by those within the capital themselves of of what kind of quality are we talking i have a few smaller ones ground up for dust for purposes of other arcane use but in terms of full diamonds, we're looking at maybe a handful that would be useful for your lower level castings of certain res uh, reviving magic. And I have two for the larger quality, but not the greatest, which was previously used. By you. <laughs> So okay, we can so, we so uh, just does just that mean there's a resurrection or resurrection but not true resurrection? Okay, okay. cool, right? Yeah, Go they ahead. have two for resurrection, none for true resurrection, and then they have four for revivify, and they have a large and quantity of diamond dust. dust. Okay, yeah. dust oh, is more do they preferable have any because it can be stored easier. Dead? Do they have any five hundred? Raised dead raise would be dead? the five hundred one, and um, in this specific nature, no, they don't. Raised Dead is the more commonly uh, used one amongst the clerics here, because they can't transport bodies back so easily. Mm. Gentle Repose is used for as best it can, but outside of that, there's not very much they can do. Alright, well, there's no no problem with spending a, a, spe a resurrection on it, because fuck it. Yeah. Again, well, Raised Dead is money. a diamond of 500 GP, so you have one for Raised Dead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Um, uh, we, we have options, though. All right. Uh, like I said, I currently have three rib fire ones already, oh. so yeah, Hold on. so that's really what we need. So I'll just get the resurrection one and some dust. Very well. How much of each are you requiring? Uh just one of the largest diamonds you have. Very well. And the dust. I we would be be best to be on the safe side and have a few castings available, which 500 golds worth? Would yes. you have that much? That would be fine. We have several thousands worth. That would be perfectly fine. Mm, that's good to hear. The smaller diamonds which aren't used by the jewellers because of their lack of uncut nature will be... do suffice here. You watch as she otherwise draws a few symbols in the air and reaches a hand into almost this spectral space and pulls, pulls out a series of boxes as she otherwise lays, uh, lays them down. She opens one up you see a relatively large diamond, probably about the size of a golf ball, uh, in there, which looks a little bit impure, but given its nature, it is a 1,000 GP diamond. And looking around the rest, she otherwise opens up a um, another box containing a few pouches of segregated 50 GP sections uh, of diamond dust. So you can buy several of those for however much you need. So it was 500 for ground and uh, one 1,000, correct? <laughs> Okay. So go ahead and take the 1,500 out of your inventory then. Or 
whoever was paying for it. If because I remember Sasha said something about giving Elgin money for it. Just down a platinum ingot. Go like keep the change. I'll have to. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> yes. So, um, were you paying out of your own money, or was there money being used? Uh, I'll, I'll pay. Okay. You pay out of your own money, handing over the platinum. She takes the pieces of platinum, kind of stores them, gives you the pouches and various other things. Looking around, you can see various boxes suspended almost like in these kind of frozen bubbles that float in the, in the air above. Looking up with which site, you see the where the, they would otherwise just be basic wooden boxes that are kind of in these kind of thin wooden cages with this kind of light arcane field around it. You see this heavy, dense arcane field around this very arcane infused wood. You get a sense that they take enchantment and other protection of magical items extremely seriously. Hmm. And just with a general nature of like your passive arcana, you look over her and she is laced with magical energy and power. You get the nature that her strength doesn't come from combat ability, but from her wares that she owns. <laughs> okay. Very good. This should be sufficient. Uh, it's a very, very impressive setup you have here. Yes, thank you. Each of the things that have been recovered here are recovered items from bags of holding. Specifically ones lost within the Astral Sea. Split or otherwise. There are some trinkets and interesting pieces here, but nothing too exciting on view. Okay, well, the, the diamonds are all I need for now. Yes. Perhaps once our most pressing business is dealt with, I'll be back. Very well. well. Do take care. In any case, the diamonds will be good. I hope not to have to use them. But I will see you ne when next I return. Well, if you don't use them, I'll always buy them back off of you. Take care now. You too. As she nods, she goes back to reading. You go to open the door, and the door swings open, and you see two students otherwise walking in. Oh, terribly sorry. As they no trouble. wander in, chatting, they head over to the kind of the large bins of paper and uh, ink files, and head over to the uh, head over to the desk where she serves them. You make your way out, and one of the kids kind of looks over as you have kind of Felipe on your shoulder. He kind of kind of turns around, calls at them as you leave. Heading out into the library, you head back to the central plaza there. And now we'll move over to Malcolm. Mm -hmm. Malcolm. Yes. You head into the main keep here. As you head in, you, with your crown, your status, people knowing who you are, there is little to no contest. You wander in as very much a guest to this establishment here. It is a interesting feeling, knowing full well that previously, if you tried this number pre of just wandering and waltzing in, you may have been stopped, questioned, and otherwise various matters would have taken place. You wander in with little resistance. One of the guards does go to ask before another one kind of jabs him in the side. There's a moment of, do you not know who this one is? <laughs> You wander in, heading into the main court, uh, heading into the main area, as you are stopped by the royal guard at the entrance to the doorway. Alt, what's your business here, Your Highness? Um, here to speak with Davini about something urgent. Very well. Council is currently in session, taking care of some matters. Once it has been completed, we'll let you in. Okay. He opens the door and otherwise heads in. You kind of hear the footsteps and you hear the wording from inside, given your passive perception. Um, there seems to be a sentence being carried out in the king's presence. Oh, I see. The door is closed shortly after. You hear no more of it. As you otherwise wait there in the kind of main central hallway, the large red carpet behind you, the, the pillars reaching up to the arching um, decorations above, made of this beautiful white and grey stone. You hear the ever-so-slight thrum of the uh, 
gift fortresses above and you see the balconies lining the interior of this Cro archers with crossbows at the ready kind of just leaning over and watching you but not ready by any means if you were to suddenly attack they don't seem to suspect if there was any ill intent here uh. you kind of take stock and note looking around there's probably a good 30 odd individuals in here prepped and ready for if if combat were to ensue moments pass maybe about 20 minutes or so as the door is opened and the guard returns they will see you now alright I will go in you go in through the door as you enter you see the emperor himself otherwise sat on his chair you see um, a number of the court members here it isn't just Davini by any means you see uh, Davini is sat over to one side. You see uh, Zokid, the Lord Marshal of the uh, the city here, as well as seeing the... Uh, you see the Gif sat, uh, sat in his respective chair. The ambassador to the Baron Lands sat in his respective chair as he does a... as he stands performing the necessary salute towards you. Uh, and you see the uh, Emperor's royal guard standing behind him. Or personal bodyguard standing behind him. You take your steps forward. The caller otherwise reads out. Malcolm, Prince of Baranlor, please step forward. I do so. You step up onto the podium. The Emperor looks down. What do you wish to speak of for this surprise visit? Before we get started, can, do you mind if I cast a quick spell just to make sure we're not being watched like last time? By all means. He leans back against the chair. I cast Detect Magic because I have that prepared this time. Okay. Go ahead and cast it. Looking around the area, go ahead and make me a perception check. Twenty <laughs> for a total of thirty-eight, I believe. Uh, I believe so. No. Yeah. No, thirty-six. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You look around. You look around yourself. There's no scrying orb around you. There's no scrying orb around the emperor or anyone else. You are a hundred percent sure. There is no sensors in here. No detections by any means. Cool. Well, I came to inform you that the King of Blood has <coughs> has returned and we are preparing to deal with him. We wanted to make sure you guys were notified and could prepare in case anything bad happens thank we don't want you to be caught off guard by him thank you for the warning i hope all does go well for you with this task I can't offer much support at this time but i have heard that you are in good hands working with another organization yes They've been fighting them for quite a bit now, so... Mm. Should be... Would It's better off than we would have been before. Yes. My governor, along with certain members such as Rohal, have prepared countermeasures should your endeavor fail. Certain forces have been put in place and measures taken for restraint magic we are very much aware from your previous talking with us that some of their individuals are difficult to kill for that reason we will be taking extra careful measures the fortresses above have been reinforced and prepared for any such attacks from the air for the time being that is 
Of course. And I have been informed more personally by Grave, but that you are now the Prince of the Barren Lands. Yes, I went and paid a visit and have been officially crowned as the Prince. Congratulations. I look Thank forward you. to working with you in the future. It's same with me as well. Well, out of curiosity, just just to tell the others that I asked, is it possible for you to provide any any combat support we're trying to gather as many people as possible that we can find to hopefully make sure this doesn't go bad at all because we fought him many times and he's gotten away before we're trying to make sure that doesn't happen this time he kind of stops, thinks about it. There are some things we can offer. But I'm not sure how useful they'll be to you. Is there anything in particular you need help overcoming? Particular abilities or powers of such a creature? Or creatures? Hmm. Well... We're not particularly infor well informed on how a pit fiend fights, but anything that could help with stopping magical abilities would be very helpful. As you mentioned Pit Fiend, you watch as Zoki the Marshal kind of just sits up from his slouch position and leans forward. Apologies for speaking, Emperor, but I'm not allowed to leave, as you know. But if they're looking for counter-fiendish me measures there might be some in the wizard wards for borrowing purposes but there are some items the emperor kind of looks at him with kind of a curious look they're known as banishment sticks you plant one in the ground and you can banish a single creature for a short period of time it's not permanent but if used on a summoned creature it will disappear Entirely. Uh, out of curiosity, would Malcolm know if the Pit Fiend is a summoned creature, or if it's the something pit... that's always there? The Pit Fiend isn't, but you know from previous discussions that the Pit Fiend's general has the ability to summon other fiends. Whether that be in large numbers or small numbers, you don't know. So it would be handy. It would potentially be handy. Alternatively, you can use it on any fiend and they have to make the save or be under the effect of the banishment spell for a minute. But they will not return to their home plane after the duration is complete. And they get they to make return. an additional save at the end of each turn. Okay. So it what works. Is on that? Um, 15 is a, is a basic magical item. Is a low DC, but if it should succeed, you can send a creature away under the effect of banishment for a minute. For up to potentially a minute. Because it's not concentration. It's just on the item. If used on a summoned creature and it fails, it doesn't come back, and the stick goes inert. Hmm. The Vona should be able to supply a few, I imagine. It'll be worth asking if that's what you're dealing with. Outside of anti-magic, that would be something more your preference. We don't have any higher-level anti-magic objects as such. 
Hmm. Well, the... From what we understand of this particular pit fiend, those could come in handy. Hmm. Then, if you want to get that sort of thing, go and speak to... Go and speak to the one in the wizard's wards. She'll be able to help. I don't know what I called her before, but Jezebel's her name. I think I called her Devona. Anyway. Mm. Uh, yes, you did. Devona's the other one who works in the librarian. But yes, if you speak to Jezebel, she'll be the one to give you the items. On a temporary basis. Bring back as many as you can. Of course. Well, then, well, then I su suppose uh, that'll be all for why I came. Don't want you, just making sure we have our bases covered, just in case. Of course. Best of luck to you. Should you fail, please get yourselves out safe. Prioritize yourselves over completing this. We'll do our best to try and figure out how to defeat him if such an event should occur. Very well, then. And, uh, Malcolm is gonna leave and make his way towards, uh, the wizard wards or whatever. Mm -hmm. You leave the uh, you leave the Crimson Keep, heading out into the main uh, the main plaza once again. You see Queglod kind of standing there waiting for you as you make your way towards her. Hello. Queglod. Oh. Hello, Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was. I thought you were referring to the person inside the inside the shop. Yeah. Ah. Uh, nah. To you. Uh, it went. It went. All right. Uh, spoke with more than just Davini. Spoke with the emperor and some other individuals as well. Oh, that's good. What did they have to say? Um, they have been preparing basically that's good i assume it is as we understood and they don't have any resources to grant us directly uh not directly but we do have the ability to borrow some banishment sticks as they call them uh it yeah, it's particularly good against fiends, from what I'm guessing, since it was brought up after I mentioned the pit bean. Hmm, that could be useful, actually. Yes, I'm gonna have to head over to the wizard's ward, sir, and see if we can see how many we can borrow. Yeah, well, I've just come from there, so I will. I'll I'll head over with you, I suppose. Uh, I managed to get the diamonds, so slash all good. Be. That's good. I was thinking of asking if they could provide any of those, but I had a feeling we might be able to get some. So. So you make your way over to the wizard's wards. Yes. Heading over, and two of you otherwise head back in, travel past those same students who are now busy on one of the um, one of the tables, busy writing out various things. As they look back over, a lot of heads are turned, looking at Malcolm. People, one, seeing a crystal dragon wormling is one thing. Seeing 
the new heir and prince of the barren lands is certainly another and there are whispers individuals looking and pointing they aren't subtle by any means of as, course. As you otherwise, <laughs> and you've had this throughout Oregon, traveling through the streets. People have made way for you, knowing full well that either you're dressed up for the occasion or you have a baby dragon as a companion. Either way, they're not getting in your way. As you, <laughs> as you head into the shop, you, you see before you the, um, the female Githzerai by the name of Jezebel, as she is otherwise leaning back, looking at the book. She looks back up. Ah, back so soon, and a companion, it seems. She nods, kind of looks at Shattercrest, and takes a step out from behind her countertop as she goes in to give um, Shattercrest some scritches under the chin. Pretty good animal. Hello. Well, aren't you just the cutest thing? How can I help? Uh, well, I recently had uh, spoken with the council, and uh -huh. they sent me here to uh, borrow some banishment sticks. I see. This must be for the endeavor that you bought the diamonds for. Yes. Of the same one. Yes. Well, it's quite a big undertaking. We need to be well supplied. Very well. With that being the case, you watch as she draws a wand and she otherwise kind of pull, pulls a flick away and you watch as one of the cage's doors opens. And you watch as a number of these kind of long, kind of golden yellow, um, probably about a foot long, uh, kind of hexagonal sticks are brought down um, and you can see that there is a uh, kind of a twisting handle at one end uh, as she otherwise kind of brings them down in a small cluster of what looks to be two groups of four and she hands off one of them to you or one of the groups of four to you take good care of them they are single use and they can be broken before they are used so take great care not to drop them Otherwise, I hope they serve you well. Thank you. And I will try and return as many as possible. She nods, kind of looking at the two of you. Given your task, is there anything else that you're particularly looking for? Previously, your party came in looking for potions of resistance. I still have those, if you're interested. Hmm. I believe I have poison, acid, necrotic, and fire damage were the main ones you were interested in. I have some cold and lightning prepared as well, but... What do you think we sh might need? Necrotic is not of much use for me, but it may be helpful for the others. Yes. As could fire, potentially. Depending on what exactly we can. Hmm. I think we should just get a little bit of boat of all. Just to cover our bases. Hmm. We, well. Depending on the price. It's I mean. like we don't have the money. Well, yeah. But... What would you be looking for? Given the endeavor, I can reduce the cost of them, but depending on how many would... depends on how many I have in stock. Fire and poison are the two more common ones. Necrotic and acid are lower, but still interesting ones. Hmm. I can probably give them to you for 70 GP each. Uh... Just, do you think it would be possible to get, like, say, four or five of each kind that you have? 
I can do five of poison and po five of fire. I can only do three of necrotic and two of acid. If you're looking for cold and lightning, I can do three of each of those. Well, I necrotic is the one we need the most. Yeah, necrotic is definitely one we need the most. Um, so three necrotic. I still have some fire and poison left over, so I think I'm all right on that. Yes, and Good. I don't necessarily need fire personally, and Sasha doesn't need fire really, so we. Can... There should be a few left over of those. And I can't imagine we're expecting to deal with poison. Yes. Or... Even if we were, we still have some of the poison ones that we got for the other one because we never actually used them. In that case, I would say just the necrotic ones. Make sure we're fully stocked up on those. Very well. That is 210 gold then for the three necrotic potions of resistance. Uh, I will pay for that. She lifts her hand into the air. You watch as a few of the potion bottles kind of slowly descend down. She places them on the countertop. Casting the other it? set of rules. Hmm? How much was it? Two, 210 GP, yeah. So, 21 platinum. If that is all, I wish you the best of luck. And stay safe. Just tink look around, is there any sign of anything else that like we know what it does in the shop? I Good. know one thing. Ooh. I would like to take a look and see if that luck stone is still around. Go ahead and make me an investigation check, each of you for this. I mean of course I'd be looking for other things as well, but luck stone I don't really want yeah. to see. Looking around the luck stone has unfortunately gone. Aww. And Quigla, what was your total? Uh, 24 on mine. Okay. Looking around, you see a number of things which kind of, some of them catch your, catch your attention, some of which you recognize, other of which you don't. You take a look through, kind of squinting over a number of them. You do recognize various plus one weaponry. There's a large quantity of wands and a few consumables on show, like scrolls. Outside of that, not very much else is on show. You do note, however, as you are looking over them, you do see what looks to be that of like a healing potion, but it's on its own in kind of this... Um, Otherwise, a large, fancy, enameled glass bottle of blue and red um, in the shape of that of a teardrop and heart. It's a little bit strange. The bottle, um, as you otherwise see, is contained within this kind of thin leather pouch that holds it around with a leather popper that wraps around the neck of the bottle. The liquid inside is that of a kind of a light reddish and slightly sloshes around as the cage floats there momentarily. Mm -hmm. What does what does this potion do? Ah, you watch as she otherwise reaches up, and kind of you watch as the cage slowly descends down as she um, kind of takes it out. The potion itself is a basic healing potion, but on the other hand, it is potentially useful for multiple uses of healing. It is the bottle that's special, not the liquid inside. This is a potion bottle of panicked healing. When you place a healing potion inside, you get multiple uses of said healing potion. And upon being drunk, it uses them. But if you store any other liquid inside it, it will immediately destroy said potion. Or the potion bottle. Out of curiosity, is it just 
basic healing potions it can... It can store do. higher level ones, but it produces less charges. Okay. Hmm. One other notable thing about this bottle of panicked healing. If you are mm -hmm. if you're going to be healing somebody else, it also takes a bonus action instead of an action. Okay. So it has got that as an extended use. You don't know if it will interact well with your potion carrier, but it's worth a try. Yeah, well, I might, I might actually pick it up anyway, and if it doesn't interact well with that, it's still worth having on us. Uh, how much would something like this cost? Including the two charges of a regular healing potion that are currently inside of it, which can either be drunk or poured out of your choice, they current it currently stands at two thousand gold for this. It's a one-of-a-kind, from what I understand, but it is an interesting object. Mm. What do you think, Malcolm? I would say it's probably worth it. Uh, yeah, I mean, considering what we're going into, most likely is to be prepared. If nothing else, I would appreciate the, the opportunity to study something like this. Hmm. Yeah. Would be useful. You might be able to modify your own a little bit if you can. Possibly. We shall see. Uh, yes, I th think I will take this. Very well. That will be 2,000 gold then, please. Okay. Hand over two hundred platinum. You, you hand over the two hundred platinum. She takes it and otherwise passes mm -hmm. the potion bottle to you. And right, there we I go. I think that's me finished. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Quagmod, I will send you the description for this. You get just Excellent. you are the first one to receive my first ever created custom magical item. <laughs> nice. I'm saving this one. <laughs> yeah. Notably, one thing which has changed is that if you pour a second healing potion into it, it does produce the, of the same type. It does produce more charges. It's the only thing okay. which isn't noted here, but you can store multiple. You get two charges for every healing potion. So you can turn one healing potion into two, one superior healing potion into two. You can turn one supreme healing potion into two. Notably, so... once, you, once you pour them out, they are destroyed, however. So if you pour them out, you, if you pour it into here, you won't be able to analyze it. Okay. But it would give you a second use of it. Hmm. Okay. Oh, yes. She otherwise nods, gives Shadowcrest otherwise a pat on the head, just a little bit of a scritch, and then heads back behind her desk. Waves goodbye to you all as you head back out, catching up with the rest of your friends. Is there anything else you'd like to do before going and collecting your various things? Mm. Elzion Burn? Mm. Anything you'd like Sorry. to do before collecting your things? I mean... Uh, I don't really need any more spell scrolls. Um, <laughs> as tempting as it is to go and be like, "Hey, I've got nineteen thousand gold. What can what one spell can you give me?" Uh, <laughs> one singular spell. Uh, hey, I've got I've got a ridiculous amount of money. Please give me the time stop spell. But you don't have a ninth level spell slot. Did I fucking stutter? <laughs> Technically, I've spell used spell. a ninth level spell, so... Actually, yeah. that's a fair point, Chris. You can still cast it from the spell slot, it just requires a DC check on your part to succeed it. What would be the DC check? Um, it is... Uh, the DC is equal to 
10 plus the level of the spell, and your check is a d20 roll plus your, your spell casting ability modifier. Same as counter Okay. So it, it'll be uh, DC 19, 19, yeah? And you have a plus 5, yeah. Have a plus 5. So that means on a dice roll, I need to roll 14 or higher. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thought. If we do Meteor Swarm to kick this off... Oh my god. Most fiends are immune to fire. I should. They are, but they're not immune that. to bludgeoning. This is true. Base. This is true. This is true. <laughs> Main thing to keep in mind is it will consume it, and if yep. there are any ninth level spells, they are probably one of a kind for your lifetime. No, so. I am well aware. But here's the thing, Chris. If I do that, when I next level up, Chris, I can get more spells. I can get the spell that I use in the spell slot. Loopholes! <laughs> Okay, no, it's not. Then the, a ninth level spells. I'm not going to be able to afford it. I don't even think um, twenty thousand gold will be able to afford. No, it. it's twenty five thousand at base for a ninth yeah. level spell. Yeah, and Chris probably bumps up the price because no, fuck you. No, it's fifty thousand halved because it's a consumable spell scroll. So mm. it enough. starts at twenty five thousand. It then depends if it goes nah, higher than that, depending on whether I want to nerf your ability to have certain spells or whether I feel they'd have access mm. to it. Mm. You know what, I'm just going to quickly check some 8th level spells and see if I need them. <laughs> Genuinely. Yeah, 8th uh, level spells would start around 10,000 I think, but yeah. Yeah, 10,000 I can afford. Um, yeah, and you do know that there it. is a, I believe it's called a scriptorium at the back of this? I'm just gonna, <laughs> of Oregon. Now, now guys, I've just had a thought. Okay, so we've got two yeah. people that can cast Earthquake, right? Ah, damn it! Wizards can't learn Earthquake. <laughs> Doesn't oh. mean you can't use the spell scroll. True, true. So you can tell I've woken up now because it's like, ooh, destruction! <laughs> earthquake, again! Just use three chain earthquakes all at the same time. Oh my god. Literally nothing left in the fortress. <laughs> I'd have to call in you, Jamie, and be like, yo, what would happen if three, like, magnitude seven earthquakes went off in the exact same place at well, the yes, exact same it's, time? It's, it's, he's a geologist, isn't he? Yeah. 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 And all over again. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, the Empire <laughs> Just make a gone. new one. Yeah, just we, make the we, second one. This is an apocalyptic event we'd cause. Uh, yeah, the Empire is gone. Uh, you yeah, know considering it's just under, okay under Adamanthia. I know it would be the best thing. All I get to do is I just get the pen tool and draw a giant circle and be like, alright, that next section of the map is gone. <laughs> but yes. So, did you want to pick up the things? Uh, or? Nah. Oh, okay. you know what? Fuck it, because it's interesting. How much would prismatic spray be? What level is that? Seventh. Seventh mm -hmm. evocation. Okay. Uh, I'm going to quickly roll a d100 to see if they have it. Just because it's an interesting spell that I keep meaning to use more often and I don't. Seventh level spell, so chance of them having it is 70 or higher. Nice and simple. 27. Nope. They don't have prismatic spray. Mm, okay. Do they have time stop though? 90 or higher? No. Oh. That is 66. No. Damn. I don't think so. I presume, I presume you've got wait, to get wait, a puff. Wait. Okay, guys, guys, guys. I need you to name every single spell you can think Alan, of. Alan, stop. There are a few I know they do have, because I have them specifically <laughs> I like, written down. But... I like what you're doing, Harlan. I genuinely... But... <laughs> yeah, there are a few that they do specifically have, because I have them written down. Outside of that, you wouldn't know. Actually, Sunbeam. Genuinely. Sunbeam? Uh, Sunbeam. Sixth level, correct? Sixth level, yeah. That they do have. There's a 79. I'll take it. Okay. Sixth level evocation. It. That's genuinely a useful spell. Uh, Out of curiosity. Mhm. Mm just to pique my curiosity. Uh, uh, sources and chain. wizards. So you can learn it if you want to. I know. I know. That. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. It's. Any spare time, I'm learning this because I know it's a good spell. Yeah. And you were saying, Malcolm? Uh, out of curiosity, just to pique my curiosity. Uh, shape change. Um, just going to quickly check what the spell is, the ninth level one that I have preserved. Okay, it's not shape change, so I have to roll for that one. Ten! Nope. Damn it. Ashin. Oh no, yeah, that is a ten. Sorry, I thought that was a one then. No, that is a ten. Get the numbers right around. Um, 
so spell scrolls I'm just checking to see how much um, how much they typically cost rarity wise sixth level is very rare it is on the lower okay. end so Sunbeam would be 3,000 gold 3,000 gold done that's right. no haggling there you go and as a wizard you can add it to your spell book by spending the time to do so yes how much time do we have Depends. If you're going to go home and spend the rest of the day doing this, you probably have around 12 hours, which would be yeah, enough yeah. for it, I, I think. I, I, I think I'm, I'm just going to slap it into my into my spell book now, Okay. because I like Sunbeam. I okay. also still need to go through all the spells that I do have. Can you remind me sometime this week, Chris, to actually go through the spells that I yeah. picked up before? That's fine. So, uh, okay. one more spell to check, just mm -hmm. because I think it might be handy. Uh, Sunburst. Level? Eighth. Eighth sunburst. Uh, it's not on my list. That is an eighty. It is there. Ooh. Can I get it? How much is it? Sunburst. I gotta check if it's legendary or if it's very rare, real quick. Because if it's very rare, then it's on the higher end. If it's legendary, then it has a base price. Okay, it's very rare, so it's on the higher end. So you'd be looking at around twenty thousand for sunburst. Uh, twenty thousand is how much platinum? 2,000. Okay, I can buy it. Okay. Uh, sunburst. Uh, instantaneous. 150 feet. Brilliant sunlight flashes in a 60 foot radius centered on a point you choose within range. Each creature in the light must make a constitution saving throw on a failed save. They take 12d6 radiant damage and, and is blinded for one minute. On a successful save, it takes half of the damage and isn't blinded by the spell. Undead and oozes have disadvantage on the saving throw. A creature blinded by the spell makes another constitution save at the end of each of its turns. On a successful save, it can no longer blind it is no longer blinded. The spell dispels any darkness in its area that was created by a spell. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's useful. I want it. Yeah, yeah, that that that's a good shout, mate. Mm. So, Sunburst. Okay, you uh, have the you're, you're scroll. Not a, you're not a wizard, are you? Uh, no. No, but he is a druid. Yeah. He can still use the spell scroll, and I believe yeah. he won't have any ramifications because he can learn it naturally as the spell class. It just means you have to roll mm. your wisdom plus a d20 roll versus a dc of 18 to cast it. I believe if you yeah. fail, I need to check if it destroys itself or if it just doesn't cast. I'll need to check, but... Yeah. I think if you fail, it does destroy itself. I think it does, but I could be wrong, so we'll have to go through that later. But for Gosh. now... You go back to the, you go back to the um, mosaic vanity. You head in. You pick up your rings and you receive your, uh, and you receive your pieces of quartz. They help you stud it into your, um, into your cloak, nice and easy. And you watch as the cloak that is otherwise wrapped around Elzion, kind of growing into the edge of his neck uh, in its own way, begins to flourish a bit more, um, becoming a much more grand cloak um in its entirety you watch as it get, gets a little bit longer and you watch as the light perfectly shimmers off of the edge of it otherwise reflecting this kind of blue hue around the rest of the room as they grow as the flex around his neck grow thicker and become more pronounced and attached i will send you the new description nails you Ooh, okay just because this seems like they've done a, a, a good job has been done of this i'm just gonna give them uh 10 plus the, uh, the the clerk ten platinum and uh, fuck it the, the lady as well. Okay. Each. I'm, I'm trying Just because to find you. Elzion is feeling charitable because he knows that if he's going to die, he needs to fill his karma up. There you go. The the bottom line of text is the thing that has been added. Mm. Okay. Okay. Okay, not... Ooh, ooh. Still got to make the save successfully, but... This is true. However, you get a general sense as you put the cloak on and you kind of feel it. It wants you to be hit by magic. It's a strange sensation. Oh, boy. This oh, is yeah. so counter-Elzion, and I love it. Wait, hold on. Elzion tank. I have an idea now. Elsin needs to somehow get ev evasive uh, or evasion now. Um, uh, you get this strange sensation as you kind of feel the cloak as it has kind of begun to ingrain into the back of the neck, kind of the, the nape and spine. 
you get a sense that of like when you move there's a moment of like it feels like an almost like an extra limb to you it's weighty enough and heavy enough that it oh. feels comfortable but as you kind Ooh. of swing you feel like you have almost a weird control over it and it over you nice oh so I how do you feel, feel Elsie? i feel good this feels so, great so is oh. dr strange I think I'm getting there. I've already, I've had the high collar since session one. Oh. So I assume it worked then. Ah, uh, definitely feels like it. Thank you, seriously, for the, for this. Um, and have you got welcome. Have you got the rings? Uh, yes. they, they otherwise pass it to you in kind of a closed parcel. Excellent. Thank you. Yes. Um. If, unless there's anything else you want, uh, this is a very cramped space, and there's four of you. If of course. You could, kind of... We'll go away. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, yes. Thank you for support. Just because Elson's got Robin a little bit. Thank you for supporting uh, a match between an elf and a dwarf. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, just, just to be like, <laughs> yes, thank you. This is what you've done. I see. This is what. They've helped. Okay. And that. Mm. You leave. Let's the, go. You leave the He's area, up. preparing the area for black holes. You cast the spell, and you're all whisked away. As you each feel your feet land on the outskirts of black hole, you see kind of the large doorway before you. The two sentinel ravens on top of the large statues that stand out front. As your immediate arrival is noticed. As you otherwise watch as the two statues rise in an offensive motion. Okay. And that is where we will end the session for the night. Mm. So, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. And we will see you next week for the continuation of these steps into devastation. Mm. Oh boy. Mm. As the campaign has like, got a new name. Like, steps like, into devastation. And no. like a solid hour in game of, uh, of Sasha smacking some metal yeah we'll do oh, yeah. we'll do your roles off stream i feel um actually no no it'd be interesting to see what happens i'd prefer to do it on stream actually so that we will do on stream okay. but that'll be for later anyway thank you for watching hopefully you enjoyed and we will see you next week Bye-bye. bye bye, bye. 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 bye.